Imagine a future where you could send a text or email just using your thoughts. Or what if the blind could have partial eyesight restored with an implant? What if we told you that you could hack into your brain with an electronic chip that will be implanted in your skull? What if you have the ability to remember just about every word in a meeting or conference? Well, scientists are already working on a surgically implanted device that could be implanted into the brain of people suffering from binge eating disorder. If that caught your attention, make sure to watch the video till the end to know more about brain implants and whether this would be the next step of evolution of humanity. The possibilities of brain implants are quite endless. It could help those with motor disabilities. It could also treat depression, or maybe it can just act as a way to interact with the electronic gadgets that you own today. It might even be able to replace languages that we speak so that we can communicate without speaking a single word. For the longest time, it has been extremely difficult to build the right kind of materials for brain implants because our brain is soft and squishy like a pudding. Electronics, on the other hand, are rigid. This makes designing a brain implant extremely tricky. It's like trying to place a metal spoon in a bowl of jelly and expecting the metal spoon to stay intact. The very first sensor was implanted into the brain of a paralyzed patient way back in 1998. And over the past two decades, we have seen a rise in interest in brain machine interfaces, which are basically brain implants that can record information from our neurons and stimulate them. Today, millions of dollars are continuing to flow into companies that are developing these technologies. You might already know that billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk is already working on his brain-machine interface startup Neuralink, and the company is planning to launch clinical trials on humans. Musk promised that the technology will enable someone with paralysis to use a smartphone just with their mind, faster than someone using their thumb. The company already successfully implanted artificial intelligence microchips in the brains of a monkey named Pager and a pig named Gertrude. But even today, Neuralink has not conducted any human trials, and its former president and biomedical engineer Max Hodak left the company and is now an investor in a rival company, Synchron. Just like Elon Musk's Neuralink, Synchron is also a brain implant manufacturing company with the aim to make technology that can help mankind cope with all brain dysfunctions, at the same time creating a product that does not affect any other part of the body. Both companies have been around for about six years now, but Synchron has beaten Neuralink in the battle of human testing. Brain implants can be used to treat neurological dysfunction, and their use for enhancing cognitive ability is a promising field of research. Implants can also be used to monitor brain activity or stimulate parts of the brain using electrical pulses. Brain implants can determine where in the brain seizures are happening in case of epilepsy. When you look at history, Synchron had its roots in Australia. But the laws in Australia were not favorable when it comes to what you can put inside a human brain compared to America. So the company was forced to move to the US for further experiments. Recently, the FDA approved Synchron's practices and got a green signal for their Stent Electrode Recording Array, or Stentrode. Graham Falstad was among the first six people that received the Stentrode implant. This project is funded by the National Institute of Health, and it cost about $10 million, so it is not cheap by any means. This implant will allow patients to text, call, or pretty much do anything that a normal person would do with their smartphone and internet service just by thinking about it. The way the Stentrode works is quite interesting. It is implanted via a wire into a blood vessel present in the center of the brain. And when the wire is pulled back, a coil of the stent electrodes is placed inside the vessel, just like a pacemaker is placed in a vessel near the heart. The coil is responsible for transmitting the neural signals emitted by the brain to the electronic device, like a phone or laptop, and it is linked via what the company likes to call a brain Bluetooth. Quite a fancy name. 
So why was Synchron granted the permission and not Neuralink? Well, the reason why Synchron was granted permission for human testing is because of the fact that this implant does not require opening the skull of the patient. But Neuralink, on the other hand, was working on a brain-machine interface since 2016 that will require drilling the skull. So it's clear that technology has not only improved our ability to process information and use it to our advantage, but it will also help you to directly control other devices or even curb your binge eating. But what are some of the main challenges with these implants or brain-machine interfaces? Well, the most important one would be the fact that the devices that drive our information economy and the tissues in the nervous system are totally different. Implants in the brain are not intrinsically dangerous and are not painful because there are no sensory neurons in the brain. The real issue is going to be the life of the device itself. It's not extremely practical to have a very elaborate surgery and have a device that won't work within a few months. You need something that will work for a long time, and these machines have a life of about five years. But some of these parts can fail early. Let's say you have a device with a few hundred electrodes. Some of them will last five years, and the others will experience gradual erosion, which will affect the information that these devices extract from the brain. Currently, we do have a lot of research being done in silicon fabrications, which might give us some positive news in the near future. Maybe this might be the only way for humans to keep up with the advanced artificial systems in the future. Brain implants might trigger a foreign body response, creating inflammation and scar tissue around the implant that reduces its effectiveness. The problem is that traditional implants are much more rigid than brain tissue which are as soft as a pudding. The stress between the implant and the tissue is caused by constant movement of the brain with respect to the implant signals. The body will treat the implant as a foreign object. This interaction between the implant and the brain is very similar to a knife cutting a piece of pudding. An implant that is as soft as brain tissue would be ideal. But such soft implants are extremely difficult to manufacture and implant on a micro scale. But a team of researchers have already found a solution using silicone and sugar. By using silicone polymers, which is widely known for their medical applications, scientists were able to make the softest brain implant possible today with the thickness of a thin sewing thread, which is about 0.2 millimeters, and the consistency of a soft pudding as soft as the brain itself. They were then able to implant this into the brain using a trick from the cookbook. They adopted the classic cooking technique of sugar melting, both for making the implant as well as for encapsulating it in a needle made of hardened sugar. When surgically inserted into the brain of an anesthetized rat, the sugar needle carried the implant to the right location and dissolved within a few seconds leaving the delicate implant in place. Sugar, being non-toxic, is naturally metabolized by the brain. The team later examined the brain tissue for three to nine weeks after implantation, and they found out a higher neuronal density and lower foreign body response compared to traditional implants. So the best way to create implants would be to create soft implants so that the body doesn't see it as a big threat which will allow them to interact with the brain with less interference by reducing the brain's inflammatory response. These new soft implants are an extremely good thing for the brain, and it's also extremely necessary for the long-term functioning of an implant. That being said, brain implants of the future will be a lot more advanced by a huge margin than what we have today. The ones that we have today are just interfaces between brain and computers and that too, this technology is still at its infancy. So when dealing with the human brain, these scientists need to be sure about what they're doing. Otherwise it might result in loss of innocent lives. The fact that the trials for human brain implants have already started is crazy. And soon you would be leading a cyborg life with the right implant that would enhance the capabilities of your brain. Innovative concepts like installing an implant into your brain might also be able to fix several health issues that couldn't be fixed otherwise. The right implant might be able to enhance your senses, 
and maybe it could even make you a better driver if that is something you have been struggling with over the past. 